What we're going to be distilling today is uh, white sage, Salvia apiana. This is wild crafted and it's organic. And uh, I'm sorry, no, it's farmed and it's organic uh, production. So what we need to do is fill up this basket with our plant material. And you'll note, if you look in here, you see that some of these are very stemmy. Now, if I were doing this in a very large still, I really wouldn't worry about it. I would just break this stuff up, right? Stick it in. But I'm doing it in, in this size container for that size still. So what I want to do is maximize the amount of plant material I have that's productive that goes into my still. So what I'll do is basically take these parts away, get myself some dash thin. These stemmy parts are really um, pretty much unproductive, but I'm just going to put them in here anyway. They're easy enough to break up. You can see how this is structured. It's quite quite aromatic. This is, actually, it's one of my favorite plants to distill. The, the yield is always good, and the, uh, the ambiance that's created during distillation is uh, yeah, it's just charming. It's wonderful. Anyway, so just to speed things up, I'm going to start putting it in. So you find that your essential oil, there is some essential oil on the stem, but really uh, the stems just take up a lot of room. I'm breaking them up, some of them, to expedite this effort. And you know, I always pack it down too. One of the things about uh, distilling is uh, you know, if you've ever made uh, chocolate pudding or oatmeal and you see it bubbling on the stove, you'll see the bubbles come up in different places. And uh, they come up through what's called rat holes. They kind of find a, an easy easy way through, especially in oatmeal, they find an easy easy path through and that's, that's where the steam wants to travel. So if you pack your plant material very tightly, it forces the steam to go through as much as, of the plant as possible. And that's what we're doing, because we're distilling it and we're trying to get all the essential oils we can out of the raw material. That's all just a waste of space. You just use raw material, I mean, you just use steam that you've produced, and you're not making any essential oil. Waste of energy. And again, be sure to pack it as tightly as you can. Pull that guy out of there. Look how that's attached there. Must have been a big, big plant. Yeah, so white sage, I generally get, you know, it depends upon the time of year it's harvested and how old the plant material is, but I've gotten as much as 3% yield by weight. 
That means for every 100 pounds of raw material, I get three pounds of essential oil. And if it's harvested at the wrong time, I might only get two pounds, about 2%. It's still pretty good, though. Of course, like everything, the best time to harvest is when the plant is flowering and when the flowers aren't too far gone. So that way you'll have your nicest combination of chemical components inside your essential oil. Packing it as tight as you can. And the idea is to fill this basket up as much as you can. Essential oils, uh, you have to look at the percent yield when you're distilling. And what that generally means is the more plant material you, you distill at one time, the more essential oil you're going to get. So you're always better off to fill the still. Fill the uh, still with raw material, productive raw material. You know, sometimes when you're dealing with a dry plant, it's good to wear a, a, a face mask. I know we're all used to wearing face masks these days, but I tell you, I've been distilling for a long time. And the one thing that gets me is that when I distill lavender, it makes me sneeze when I distill dried lavender. So I actually wear a face mask when I'm loading the still. Of all things, you know, lavender is also one of my favorites to, to distill. Now this is dry material. You could also, of course, use fresh material, which uh, is quite good. When you use fresh material, you have to realize that your yield is going to be a little bit lower. And when you're distilling, you know, the fresh material contains water. So when you're distilling, the latent heat has to transfer from the steam to the water inside the plant which is quite nice if you're collecting hydrosols because then you're distilling that water that's part of the plant, which is incredibly aromatic. With dried, dried material, it's not gonna be uh, quite the same. You'll make some beautiful hydrosols, there's no question, but it's just the difference you, you're confronted with. All right, I think we're almost there. Finito. You know, if some drops on the floor, don't worry about it. Pick it up and throw it in there. Now we have a little bit less than I would have, what I would prefer to use, and that's because we're doing this in the off season, and I'm limited on the amount of raw material I have. Normally speaking, I would I would pack this as tightly as possible, but still, I'm compressing it and that'll help us out. Well, 
next step is to put this basket inside the still. So in order to do that, we detach this from the condenser. It's very simple, you can see this. Look how easy that is. This is all stainless steel. There's no, there's no rubber or anything else. This is purely stainless steel. And then we remove the hood. We have three screws. And you know, it might, might look like overkill with the size of these screws, but actually it's not. What it does is it helps you compress the, the lid very adequately. There we go. And then this will lift just off like that. So we'll take a look inside the still so you can see what's going on there. This is the retort. You'll notice the horizontal tube uh, sticking uh, into the side of the distiller. And that's the heating element. This is an electric distiller, and it's a 220 uh, volt distiller. We also have 110. Uh, you'll also note that there are some vertical standards, and what that does is it keeps the basket full of plant material from touching the water. So it's a very simple, basic operation, and uh, now you see what's going on in there. You always want to have water covering your heating element because if you don't, your heating element's gonna burn out. And we'll uh, show you that when we fill up the still with water and start the distillation. And this just goes inside the still. What's happening is this basket only sits up to about that height. So this is plant material and this is going to be just water. Now we're dealing with dry plant material. So you have to realize that as you start heating up the water and the steam starts leaving the water and entering the plant, the plant's going to absorb that water. So what I do is always start with the water level at about here which is actually into some of the plant material. That's okay, because I know it's all going to be absorbed during the uh, beginning of distillation. 